that's A. If we move on to B, right, so now what we're looking at is something that is isothermal against a constant pressure of one atmosphere. So the thing that I'm going to do now, right, is, is look at it, right, so we know it's isothermal. So what we know is then that delta E again is going to be equal to zero. However, in this case right here, right, it's going to be an irreversible expansion, right? Because it's not, we're not saying that it's reversible. We're saying that it's happening against a constant external pressure, right? The pressure, uh, um, you know, the two pressures are different, right? The the pressure initial and the pressure final. But we're saying in this case that it's happening against a constant pressure. We're not slowly and in an infinitesimally small steps changing the pressure in this case, right, to get to the new volume, right? We're just saying like, okay, right? We're starting off at, at what, 2.5 atmospheres? All right, now we're dropping down to one atmosphere, all right? And now work, heat, all of that stuff happens um, in those cases, right? And so those are, the again, the key words to think about. And so since we're having it happen against a constant external pressure of one atmosphere, that means that in this case, right, work is going to be equal to negative P delta V, right? Because we're going to have, the P is constant, the volume is going to change, Right. But uh, um, it's not going to, um, you know, be a scenario where um, the, uh, uh, um, you know, you, you use the, you know, integrated uh, approach going from from, you know, the initial to, to the final. Right. It's going to be like quick drop and then move over. Right. And so, you know, you, you, you quickly drop the pressure and then the volume changes. Right. So, um, you know. So we can have right this right here now because we know delta is e, delta e is equal to zero right and delta e is equal to q plus w again we know then that this is going to be equal to negative q right we, we already know that the heat is just going to simply be the opposite sign of the work that we calculate so again all we have to do is just use one equation to calculate um you know what the the value is that that we're looking for right and we can just multiply that by negative one now in the case of the entropy it's isothermal, right? In this scenario right here, that doesn't help us at all with the entropy. It's an irreversible process. So that's going to tell us that it's not going to, delta S of the universe should not equal zero, right? So it should have some value, right? Either positive or, 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 or negative, right? We don't know. We're going to have to use the equations. So we're going to have to actually calculate what's going on um, in those scenarios, right? And actually use equations um, for, for what's going on there. So, um, so, but at least, right, we have an idea of part of it, right, of, of what we have to do. So again, I'm just going to write out what all of my conditions are. So I know, right, the number of moles is 2.50 atmospheres, right? I know that the temperature is staying the same at 293 Kelvin in this case. I know that the CP is equal to 37.1 joules per Kelvin mole. I know that pressure initial is equal to 2.50 atmospheres. I know that pressure final is equal to 1.00 atmospheres. And now I can just go back to like the last problem, right? Because all the conditions are the same. So I know the V initial right, is 24.04 liters. And then I know that V final is 60.1 liters. Right, just using what I, what I calculated last time, right? So I have all of those conditions right there. So what I can do now, right, for work, Oh, is I can just plug in the, the stuff that I have, right? So I have negative P, right? So in this case, the pressure is going to be the final pressure, right? The external pressure of one atmosphere. So that's going to just simply be 1.00 ATM. <clears throat> Excuse me. And right, and now I need to calculate uh, v, uh, delta V, right? So that's going to be V final minus V initial. So V final is 60.1 liters minus V initial, which is 24.04 liters in this case. And so what I get then as my work, sorry, is negative one times 60.1 minus 24.04. So what that comes out to being is negative 36.06 .06 liter atmospheres, right? And so that's a liter atmosphere. So, um, right, that's not in joules. So that's a very important thing to think about is that you have to make sure that you're paying attention to whatever units you're ending up with with everything. Um, because if you know we're talking about work, heat, entropy, enthalpy, delta G, all that stuff, uh, right? Those are always gonna be reported in some type of proper energy unit, right? So like joules or calories um, in those scenarios, right? So, so right now, right, the units are in liter atmospheres. So what we have to do is figure out, well, what's the conversion of liter atmospheres to joules per Kelvin? 
right? And so to do that, we can just simply use the R values that we know, right? So we know then that, uh, right, the, the, the R value is equal to 8.314 joules per Kelvin mole. But we also know that the gas constant, right, is equal to 0 0.08216, not 16, 06, 8206 liters atmospheres Kelvin mole. Right? So we know what that what that right there is. So all we have to do to figure out what the, the conversion factor is, is we can just simply divide the two gas constants by each other because then the Kelvin and moles should cancel out. We should end up then with a unit of joules over liter atmosphere. So if we do that, in this case, right? So we have 8.314 joules over Kelvin mole divided by 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres, Kelvin, mole, right? Kelvins cancel, moles cancel. So we should only end up with joules over liter atmospheres. So if we take that, we have 8.314 divided by 0 0.08206. What we get is 101.3 joules per liter atmosphere, right? So that's the conversion factor. So all I have to do now is just take this value that I have where it's in liter atmospheres, and I just simply multiply that by the 101.3 joules liter atmospheres, right? Liters cancel, atmospheres cancel, I only end up with joules. And so what I get now is negative 36.06 times 101.3. What I get is negative, that work in this case is equal to negative 3,653 joules, right? Which is, you know, pretty much what I have, right? In the, the answer key, right? Where work is negative 3.65 kilojoules, um, right? So we have that right there. Now, again, right, we know that Q is going to be equal to negative work in this case, right? So that means then that we're going to have negative times negative 3,653 joules. Take that and then I don't even need to plug it in. I don't know why I was about to grab my calculator. It's 3,653 joules in this scenario, right? So now, so that's Q. So, so that's done, you know, delta is done, Q is done, work's done. So now the question is, how do we approach uh, the delta S problems, right? So in this, right, we know that delta S of the universe is equal to delta S of the system plus delta S of the surroundings. So we just now have to calculate what delta S of the system is and what delta S of the surroundings is, right? So the delta S of the system, oh, the delta S of the system, right? That equation is N R natural log V T V two, sorry, over V one, right? So we're ha we have to use the proper uh, um, values in this specific case right here, right? Where we're doing an irreversible expansion. And so we can just plug in the values that we have, right? Cause we know the number of moles. We know R, right? And we have to use the R that has the joules as the units. Right, we know what the V final is and the V initial. So if we take that, plug that in, right, we have N is equal to 2.50. I realize I wrote atmospheres here instead of moles. Um, 2.50 moles times R, right, which is going to be then the one that has joules, right? So that's 8.314 joules over Kelvin mole. Now, one th important thing, right, to remember is that delta S is always going to be like the units for delta S is always joules over Kelvin. Um, right, so that's why there's no temperature uh, uh, factored into the delta S of the system. Um, this is important, an important note in that regard. Um, times the natural log of the V final, right, which is 60.1 liters over 24.04 liters in this case right here. So we take that and we multiply all that. So 2.5 times 8.314 times the natural log of 60.1 divided by 24.04. So what we get in this case is 19.05 joules per Kelvin, right? Because the moles cancel out. In this case, liters cancel out right there, right? So we have that right there. So anybody, right, that, that, that is paying attention and remembers uh, part A, Right? That's the exact same value that we got for the delta S of the system there. And the reason for that is, is that delta S of the system, right, is going to be a, um, 
is a, a, a state function, right? So it depends on the state of the system that you're looking at. So the delta s of the system um, should be the same for both of them, um, you know, because they're essentially right under the same exact, you know, conditions, right? They're both isothermal, right? The, the number of moles is the same, the temperature is the same, the pressures are all the same, the volumes are all the same in those cases right there. So they're all, so that's why, you know, the delta S of the system is equal in those cases. Now, the delta S of the surroundings, right? Because it's not the system, the delta S of the surroundings isn't going to be equal as, as what we got in A, right? So that should, value should actually be different because we're, 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 you know, altering what's going on, um, you know, with the amount of, uh, of heat, right? That, that is being transferred in, right? Because the Q values are different, right? The paths are different for the two of them. And so what's happening with the surroundings is gonna be different as well. So then in the case, you know, in this case right here, right, the delta S of the surroundings, right, is going to be equal to QP over T, right? Because we're at constant pressure, right? Delta S of the surroundings is going to be equal to QP, right? It's also equal to, uh, or not Q, equal to QP, right? It's equal to negative QP, sorry, um, um, in this scenario, right? So, um, you know, right, because it's also equal at constant pressure, right, to negative delta H over T of of this of what you're looking at. So, um, right, we have that right there. We know what the, the, the heat is, right? We calculated that earlier in this problem, right? We know what the temperature is, excuse me. So we just plug those values in, right? So we have negative 3,653 joules over the temperature, which is 293 Kelvin. We take that, plug those values in. So negative 3,653 divided by 293 comes out to being negative 12.47 joules per Kelvin, right? And on the key, I have negative 12.5 joules per Kelvin, right? You know, same thing, um, right? And so, that, so that's what we have is our delta S of the surroundings, right? So they're not equal to each other in this case, right? Because it's an irreversible process. Um, and so that means that delta S of the universe, right? Is it gonna be a non-zero value? So now all we have to do to calculate delta S of the universe is we just simply plug in our two values that we calculated. So the delta S of the system is 19.05 joules per Kelvin plus delta S of the surroundings, which is negative 12.47 joules per Kelvin. And so that comes out to being 19.05 minus 12.47 comes out to being 6.58 joules per Kelvin, right? So these are all our values that we're looking for in those cases, right? Which matches, right? 6.5, close enough, right? I mean, it's just simply, you know, I, I probably was just simply truncating a lot more values um, when I was making the key, but, um, but yeah, so that's, so that's all you, you know, that's how you approach it. So that, those are the things to think about. And so, you know, in, in an isothermal irreversible expansion or compression case, right? Delta E still equal to zero. Q is still equal to negative work, but now, right? Delta S of the system is you're going to have to use the equation, like the proper equation to calculate Delta S, which is going to be the, you know, number of moles times the gas constant times the natural log of V2 over V1, right? You're going to be doing the, you know, the value from the integration. And then the Delta S of the surroundings is going to be equal to negative, you know, Q over T in, in, in those cases, right? And then you just add those up and that's what, how you get Delta S of the universe. So that's how you approach, approach P, right? That's how you approach an isothermal uh, irreversible process.